many things to start with. So it was a, it was quite the night in Wisconsin. John Dadian, our political analyst, is here to break it all down and where we stand now. So first of all, I think the headline that everyone's talking about this morning is that all of those candidates have backed off of that written pledge to support the eventual nominee. What happened? And I can't believe, I mean, the, all three uh, campaigns have some of the best consultants, a couple of them are friends of mine, et cetera. I can't believe how much they're blowing it. You want to know the answer that all three of them should have given to Anderson Cooper? I'm going to be the nominee, so it's a moot subject. Boom. Well, that's what Ted Cruz said, kind of. Uh, he yeah. just said, I, no, he said, he said I can't support somebody who said he things about my wife. wife. Yeah, but then yeah. he said, I'm going to beat Trump. I mean, he did go that far. Whoever the other two are that aren't the nominees, here's going to be the tough question in the general. A reporter's going to say, you know, now that Candidate X is the uh, nominee. Do you support them or Hillary Clinton? And that's going to be the tough answer. What right. in the world has Reince Priebus done to the Republican Party? What has happened here? I mean, you, you have to look at uh, as an observer of the party and you think to yourself, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. If I'm chairman of the Republican Party, I'd be on the phone, not to the campaigns, to each candidate daily, mm -hmm. yeah. daily, either to assuage her fears, to tell, to make sure they're listening to him, et cetera, to show that you're impartial. That's Trump's biggest concern, that he doesn't feel that the chairman's uh, being impartial, and I don't think he is. Why do you say that? Well, just because of, of the way that they, all the rumors, and because some, keep in mind how big the RNC is, some of the surrogates were, were talking to other campaigns and not the Trump people, things such as that. Okay. I don't think people understand what the, uh, what the process is for nomination. I think they, they think that somehow this is an election, but this is really a Republican machine doing this. Well, here's the problem with the Republican Party. When people say there's going to be a, you know, a, a schism you know, in the party, et cetera, here's the problem. Love them or hate them, everybody agrees that all, all these uh, primary Trump wins, he has brought a lot of independents in, and he's brought a lot of former Democrats in. Right. So if he's not the nominee, boom, there's where the big fission in the Republican Party happens in the general election. If you're a Democrat who wanted Trump, and all of a sudden he's not the Republican nominee, what do you do? You either go back to being a Democrat or you don't vote. I think it's important for people to understand that the rules of, of a convention and the ballots and the way they go and the delegates and the way they need to vote first in the first round and then the second round it can all change. I think it's important for people to understand those have been the rules forever. Those aren't just special rules now that Donald Trump is in the race and, and, and the Donald Trump people can't say that the GOP is doing this to him because it's Donald Trump. Slightly disagree with you when you say the rules forever. No, they change about every four years. For example, but four years the ago they changed. the ballot has to be currently. who you, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, that's true. However, there is a provision. Uh, keep, people keep in mind, the Republican Democratic parties, they're separate, you know, uh, private entities, and they can make their own rules. The biggest concern is there's a provision that may allow them to change all the rules the day before they, uh, they convene the convention, and that's what all three camps are concerned about. You call that skullduggery. I do. That's my favorite <laughs> word. And, and, and that's it. And keep in mind, we keep talking about Trump and the problem that the RNC has yeah. with uh, Donald Trump. Keep in mind, Cruz is no favorite of the uh, right. Republican uh, National Committee either. Um, so, and of course, we think Kasich you know, doesn't have a prayer, but although I think he has a very good shot at being vice president. Well, that's interesting. Uh, so now, where do the campaigns go from here? Well, again, starting next week, we go back in the primary uh, uh, system, et cetera. Even though it's two months away, we're going to know in California for once. Now, actually, this yeah. is big news we haven't talked about. California is going to be a player for both parties. Bernie Sanders is tightening up with sure. Hillary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Cruz and Trump, the last poll I saw, which was taken about three days ago, shows them basically tied with the margin of error. So California is a player as far as the nomination. California is still a blue state. Correct. But as far as the nomination, it's a player for both parties. So in about another month, you're going to see all the candidates out in California, hopefully on your set. Wouldn't that be exciting? Wow. <laughs> Lisa, you could have Donald Trump sitting right here. No, oh, that could, could happen. Could you imagine? Yeah, that could happen. Could this, you, we haven't been be in play in a long, long time here. Oh, I know. In my lifetime, I don't remember right. the last time we were a player. All right. Well, John, good to see you. Thank you so much for your time this morning. 